The Beer Barrel Puzzle. Henry Dudeney is considered perhaps the greatest creator of puzzles of all time. To this day, if you get a book of puzzles or if you see a magazine article on puzzles or a puzzle in the newspaper, chances are very good that the author, to some degree, stole them from Henry Dudeney. As we've mentioned before, puzzles are a great place to develop problem-solving skills. And this is maybe especially true with Henry Dudeney. Case in point, the barrel of beer puzzle. A man bought an odd lot of wine in barrels and one barrel containing beer. He sold a quantity of the wine to one man and twice that quantity to another, but kept the beer to himself. The puzzle is to point out which barrel contains beer. Can you say which one it is? Of course, the man sold the barrels just as he bought them without manipulating in any way the contents. In other words, one of the barrels had 15, one had 31, one had 19, one had 20, one had 16, and one had 18 gallons. All right, how do we get started on this problem? We could just try trial and error, dividing up the barrels into three piles where one pile is twice as much as the other, and the third pile only contains one barrel. But that would take a long time. There are a lot of possibilities here. Or we could try to do it algebraically. But problems like this, which deal with definite increments, can be very difficult to do just using algebra. So what we're going to do, and this is an excellent problem-solving technique, is to mix the two approaches. We're going to come in and try to describe the problem algebraically and see if that gives us any insights, and it, it will. And then we're going to get it in what we might call trial and error range. Get it down to the point where we have few enough possibilities that we can just try each one. Now, for starters, to get a handle on the problem, we need to ask ourselves, what are we interested in? Are we interested in the number of barrels that go to the first person and the number of barrels of wine that go to the second? No, we're interested in the amount. So probably the very first thing to do is just figure out what the total amount is. We can do this just by adding the numbers up and we get 119 gallons of combined beer and wine. Now let's try to do a little algebra. So we know we have a total of 119 gallons of beer and wine. How do we state that using the symbolism, the language of algebra? Well, that one's really easy. Let's let W be the gallons of wine and B be the gallons of beer. W plus B equals 119. Now look back at the problem. What else do we know? Let's call the two guys who Dudney sells the wine to, Tom and Jerry. We'll let T be the amount of wine that Tom bought, and J be the amount of wine that Jerry bought. And we've already said W is the amount of wine in gallons total, so T plus J equals W. Now go back and look at the problem there. It says... We're selling twice the quantity of wine to one man as the other. Let's say that we sold twice as much wine to Jerry as to Tom. It doesn't matter. We could switch it up. Jerry gets twice as much wine as Tom. Jerry's amount of wine is two times Tom's amount of wine. That means wherever we have a J, we can replace it with 2T. Now we get the equation t plus 2t equals w. Now let's step back for a second and talk about why we would want to do that. In general, we want to get the fewest number of unknowns or variables we can. We started out with t plus j equals w. That's three unknowns. When we substitute in 2t for j, that takes us down to two unknowns. And what's more, it lets us simplify the problem even more to 3t equals w. And that is big. I mean, 
that is really big for this problem because that gives us an important, a useful insight that we can use to solve the whole thing. 3t equals w. Now take a look at these numbers we have here, the amount of wine in gallons in each barrel. Do you see any fractions? No, it's all whole numbers. So that means that t is a whole number and w is a whole number. And that means, if you think about it for a minute, w has to be divisible by 3 because t equals one-third of w. So, for example, w couldn't be 100 because the amount of wine that Tom gets couldn't be 100 divided by 3 because that doesn't come out to be a whole number. We can use this fact to get us into what we've called guessing range. But we first probably want to do a little bit more algebra. Let's go back to that first equation. W plus B equals 119. Now, for starters, just to note, 119 is not divisible by 3. 117 is. And 120 is, but 119 is not. That's kind of important, but we'll get back to it. So, W plus B equals 119. In other words, the amount of wine plus the amount of beer equals 119 gallons. Now, we've been talking about W, so it might be useful to get W by itself. We can do that by subtracting B, the amount of beer, from both sides. And that gives us... W equals 119 minus B. And we said the amount of wine has to be divisible by 3. And since 119 minus B is the same as the amount of wine, that means 119 minus B is divisible by 3. And that puts us in easy guessing range. Because remember, there's only one barrel of beer. That means B has to be equal to 15 or 31 or 19 or 20 or 16 or 18 gallons. So when we subtract, say, 31 from 119, if we get something divisible by 3, we probably got our answer. We could rule out 15 and 18 before we even start. If you think about it for a minute, I bet you can tell why. It has to do with being divisible by 3. But we're just going to go ahead and check them anyway since it's really quick at this point. We only have six possibilities. So let's go ahead and see what we get when we subtract off each one of these. 119 minus 15 is 104. 119 minus 31 is 88 and so on. You can see where this is going. Now, is any one of those divisible by 3? Yes. 99. Is 99 the only one that's divisible by 3? Yes. Yes, it is. So, that means the only way we can meet the conditions given by Dudeney is if the barrel of beer has 20 gallons. Now let's step back and think about what we just did in terms of problem solving. We had a problem that would have taken way too long to do by trial and error and would have been fairly sophisticated to do purely mathematically. How did we get around this? Well, we started with algebra. We described the problem in mathematical terms, in terms of equations. Then, once we had a good handle on the problem, once we described everything in nice, neat notation, and once we'd gotten some insights from that notation into what the numbers had to be, then we started doing trial and error. Once we had done that, we were able to check our answers and take a problem that would have been very difficult done one way or the other, and by combining two approaches, we managed to get a fairly simple problem. As always, you can get more of this stuff at You Do the Math, K through Calculus.